What's up, everybody? Justin here. We are back for more. Um, I hope that you like this format because um, I'm seeing to be digging it. I got the light situation figured out. So uh, maybe I will stick with this for a little while. Hope you like the new intro. I had to drop the song, but I think by now everybody knows what the reference is from. Uh, anyway, so into the D's. We have more um, CDs to get through real quick. And uh, up first, we are listening to Angantyr's Hall. Uh, black metal band, U.S. black metal band. Um, play kind of grim, kind of pagan black metal. A little like Graveland. Um, I don't know much about them. This demo is recorded, is a limited 33 to 100. Um, so uh, I'll have to look up and see how old this is. I don't remember where I got this, but it's good. It's just good, grim, kind of Graveland type black metal. So, into the CDs. Um, up first, The Descendants with Hypercaffium Spazinate. So, this is their most recent full length. Uh, really cool packaging here. So, um, of course, the Descendants are a punk rock band. They've been around for going on about 40 years now, and they've had the same stable lineup for 30 years. Um, the Descendants are pretty much responsible for pop punk. And a lot of you may say, well, fuck them because pop punk sucks. But the Descendants are real special. They, um, they have such a unique sound, and, and every member of the band is so good at what they do. Um, Bill Stevens is an amazing drummer. Uh, Milo Arkerman has such a unique voice. He's the singer who can't sing but sings, and it just it works so well. And Stephen Edgerton and, and uh, Joel Alvarez are just a, amazing guitar and bass players, respectively. Um, this is the only Descendants album I own on CD. I've got several of the records. Um, and unlike a lot of Descendants fans, I prefer mid-era to newer Descendants. So, Everything Sucks from 1996, and um, Cool to Be You from 2004, and uh, this one. And you definitely hear, if you go back to their early stuff from the early, early 80s, um, they were a young band, and they sound young, and Milo sounds very young. And now they're all, they're these men in their 50s. Um, and they, uh, it's mature, but they're still, you know, they, they still write songs about girls and farts and, you know, dumb shit, but uh, they do it with just such a, um, uh, a killer direction and, a, uh, really catchy songwriting and, and they've, they've become, they were a little rough around the edges way, way back in the day and, um, they are definitely, definitely um, more refined now, but I just, I absolutely love this band. And um, there's a really, really good documentary about them. Um, and if it's on YouTube, I'll link it. If not, I'll link the trailer for it or whatever I can find. But uh, if you like The Descendants, let's talk about it. Um, if this isn't your thing, check it out. I want to know what you think. So uh, I'll drop some links to this and some other good Descendants stuff that I like. So, next we have um, Despair. Despair is a hardcore band from New York, uh, Buffalo, New York, I think, um, back in the 90s. And uh, the singer of Despair, Scott Vogel, went on to start Terror. And Terror is still around today. They've been around for 20 years. And they're just a solid fucking old school kind of beat down, break down, straight edge hardcore band. And I really like Terror. Uh, but I love Despair. Um, this is an EP called Kill. I've also got a couple of their 7 inches. And Despair is a little darker. They were a little uh, more dissonant sounding. Um, a little angrier. Uh, not as in your face and and uh, kind of old school like youth crew hardcore the way Terror is. But um, this is really, really, really good shit. I'm going to link this EP below. All right, so Destroyer 666. Uh, ben talked about one of his videos uh, way back when. And he's not a big Destroyer 666 fan, and I'm not either. Um, 
You'll notice that this is sealed. I have listened to this. Uh, I had several of these that I got from Hell's Headbangers uh, for my distro, and I opened one and listened to it a bunch. And then I gave it to a buddy of mine, but I put another one on the shelf so I could keep one, and I haven't gone back and opened it. And Destroyer 666 are, are thrashy. They're a thrashier black metal band, and uh, I'm not a big thrash fan. Me and someone else were talking about this on my, on my comments the other day, that I don't talk about a lot of thrash, and thrash just isn't my thing. Um, I like thrash, and I like plenty of thrash bands, and we'll get to them throughout the CD collection. Uh, but it's not a genre that I just get behind a lot. Um, and when it comes to black metal, I'm not a big thrashy black metal fan. And there's there's bands throughout my collection that I love that play that kind of stuff. And Destroyer 666 is really, really good, but I just I can't really get into them. Um, I'm going to give this another try. And I don't know their older material at all. I've heard it here and there, but never enough to really know what it is. So next we have Destructor with Nailed. Destructor is an Australian black metal band, and they're kind of black thrash, uh, such as Destroyer 666. This is a really cool uh, addition, that foil stamp logo. Uh, and this is really heavy, like cardstock. It's kind of textured. Um, this came out on Hell's Headbangers probably 2008 or 2009. And uh, it's good. It's good. Kind of dark thrashy black metal. Uh, but I have not listened to it in a long time. Every so often I'll, I'll pull out a stack of CDs of random stuff to throw in the car and I'll put that in. So next we have Deteriorat with uh, Echoes from the Past. Deteriorat was a death metal band from New Jersey um, that existed early 90s. Um, they're still together today, but um, they started kind of around that tail end of Incantation uh, getting popular and Immolation and Morpheus Descends and all those, you know, Rotrevor, all these bands from New England and New York around that time. And Deteriorat never had the success of those bands, but they are really, really, really fucking good. Uh, this is a compilation that Razorback Records put out a few years ago. Um, I was lucky to be able to do the layout design for it. And uh, I'm really stoked on the way it came out. Um, so this is demos and 7 inches and there's lots of pictures and you know collage stuff here. Um, this is a fun one to work on. And uh, if you just like good, you know, early 90s, mid 90s kind of doom death you know, not brutal death metal, but that uh, that more evil death metal. Check out the Tyrion Rock. Um, check out In Ancient Beliefs, the full length, one of their full links. That's a really good one. So next we have Devast with Art of Extermination. Uh, this is a brutal death metal record. Came out on Deep Send Records. Um, not sure when. Probably several years ago and I'm not super super familiar with this one but I'll throw it on whenever I'm in a, a brutal death metal mood I'll grab a stack of brutal death metal CDs and that's all I'll listen to for a week and this usually ends up in the stack somewhere but I'm not super familiar with it then I've got four Devastator CDs so we've got the summoning we have conjuring evil Uh, nuclear proliferation and a split with Blasphemer. So Devastator's a uh, kind of a thrashy black metal band from South Florida. Uh, my band played a show with them about 10 years ago. That's where I picked up a couple of these and um, the others came from Regimental Records. I used to do a lot of trades with Regimental. They're a great label out of New Jersey. Lots of good black metal stuff throughout the years. Um, I I have these and I like this band, but I'm not super super familiar with it. I listen to it every so often, but it has certainly certainly been a while since I've spun any of this stuff. I need to throw it on and get reacquainted with it. Then we have a soundtrack. So this is the soundtrack to The Devil's Rejects. Um, of course, that's the sequel to House of a Thousand Corpses. Uh, I love House of a Thousand Corpses. When it came out, I was anticipating it. You know, the story behind that movie, if you are unaware, it was made several years before it ever got released. And in the underground horror, you know, scene, 
a lot of us knew that it was out there. And as you know, here Rob Zombie, he's this unabashed like horror fan, and he's made you know this throwback horror movie. And when it came out, man, I fucking loved it. And the soundtrack to it, which I'll talk about when we get to the H's, um, it's killer. It's just killer. And then so the Devil's Rejects comes out, and I didn't care for this movie as much as House of a Thousand Corpses, but it's got a killer soundtrack. So you've got Allman Brothers, uh, Three Dog Night, um, Kitty Wells, uh, Buck Owens, which, man, we've talked about Buck Owens. I fucking love Buck Owens. Um, James Gang, uh, Joe Walsh, and, uh, of course, Leonard Skinner. Uh, but just a really, really, really killer soundtrack. And this one, um, just like House of a Thousand Corpses, there's, uh, quotes from the movie throughout it, uh, which really adds to the listening experience. But let me tell you, this song, where is it? Right here. Rock On by David Essex is the worst fucking song ever written. I fucking hate that song. Number one of all time, if you ever ask me, what's the worst song ever written? Rock On by David Essex. So, here's a little piece of slam history. Devourment 138. So Devourment, this record is a is a cornerstone. This and Molesting the Decapitated, a cornerstone of brutal death metal and i'm not a big big fan of this um i don't think it's as great as a lot of people from this scene let on um it's just but it you know it is what it is and you have to respect it if you like brutal death metal you wouldn't have brutal death metal the way it is today without this um but it's not my favorite not my favorite band uh it's all right when it comes to this kind of stuff for me so here's a good one. Diaboli, Diaboli, Anthems of Sorrow. This was a black metal band. I believe they're Finnish. Um, I bought this from Full Moon Productions uh, years and years and years and years ago. Look, call for a free catalog. Full Moon Productions used to send out these little half sheet size paper catalogs. Um, and I'd flip through them and, you know, you'd call and order. Uh, give them your call and order and then mail them a money order. And, you know, you get your CDs four weeks later. But uh, I really, really miss getting the Full Moon catalogs in the mail. I discovered so many great bands through that. And this is a good one. It's just cold, kind of grim, standard black metal. Now, they have some stuff before this record. This was the second or third or fourth record. I don't remember. Um, but I was talking with Laurie from Satanic Warmaster on Facebook one day. And I mentioned this band. And he linked me to some of the older stuff that I had never heard. Man, it's so fucking good. I gotta get copies of it. Uh, I'll drop... I put a link for everything, and then every, after every fucking CD, I'm gonna put a link for the below. I do it with everything. I hope that you guys are clicking on them and watching them and listening to stuff. Um, so next we have Diabolic Excisions of Exorcisms. So this is a Floridian death metal band. They play your standard, like, Tampa Bay death metal. Um, this was probably recorded at More Sound or either with Punchy Gonzalez. Yeah, it was recorded with Punchy Gonzalez at Diet Orm Studio. This is a this came out in 09. I think this is their most recent um, CD. There might be one more after this. I'm not sure. This is the only Diabolic I own, and I'm not a big Diabolic fan, but it definitely fills that void between like Hate Eternal and Malevolent Creation and Deicide and Monstrosity. They fall into all of that camp. It's real evil, fast, fucking shreddy death metal. Um, but I saw them in 2001 with Demi Borgir on Demi Borgir's first American tour, to my knowledge, the best of my knowledge it was. Um, it was them, Cryptopsy, Diabolic, and Christian here in Atlanta. And these guys were just goofy as fuck live, man. It was bad. The sound was real bad that night. The drums sounded fucking terrible. It sounded like Antar was playing just buckets. Uh, and everything was triggered real fucking awful. But uh, it was fucking terrible. Uh, but this is an alright CD. I need to go back. Some of their older stuff's a lot better. Um, I need to pick them up. If I ever come across them, I'll pick them up. So then we have Diamanthian. Uh, this 
is Arcana Doctrina. This came out on Oshawary Industries. Shout out to Brian and Josh. Uh, I've never opened this. I got this from Brian in a trade. And I think it's more kind of old school style, you know, doomy death metal, technical death metal. It's not really brutal death metal. But uh, if I'm thinking of the right band, I need to open this and listen to it. Um, definitely looks cool. It looks rad. It sounds, the song titles sound rad. So I need to check that out. Might be up my alley. All right, last. Dillinger Escape Plan. I'm sure some of you were not expecting to see this. Um, so my kind of musical progression throughout the, the 90s was I got into death metal and I got into punk rock and hardcore and I went way back into death metal and black metal. Um, but along the way, I got into Dillinger. And I had heard them... I heard the Under the Running Board EP uh, somewhere along there in the late 90s. And then before this came out, I heard the song 43% Burnt on an Initial Records compilation. And for those of you that don't know, uh, Initial Records was a hardcore emo metal label out of Louisville, Kentucky. And they used to have this big catalog they'd mail out, and all the catalogs came with a... a promo CD, a compilation CD. I discovered lots of great bands through that. Lots of bands through that catalog. Man, I, I miss getting initial catalogs so bad. I can even remember the way they smelled. But, uh, so many good bands through initial. It was almost like a zine. The catalog was like a zine in itself. And, uh, I heard 43% Burnt, which is the second track on this record, on, uh, an initial comp. And, that song, that's their Angel of Death. That's their Freebird. That is their swan song. And uh, it's the most visceral, fucking violent, chaotic, math core, you know, hardcore song ever. And uh, this record is just insane. I saw them on this tour uh, several times. But the first time I saw them, uh, they played the Cow House in Tallahassee. And it was just absolutely insane. It is, they were the most chaotic band. I don't know how they would do what they did and keep everything together and, and still play because um, they were fucking everywhere. Uh, all over the stage, in the crowd, hitting people with guitars, kicking people. But those early Dillinger shows were just fucking insane. Um, and I love this record. But then after this one, and as much as Greg Pucciato was a great vocalist, um, Dimitri left after this CD, and Greg Pucciato joined, and he's a great vocalist, man, but I've never liked the way they've progressed at all. And I saw them a lot on this era, probably six or eight times, but I've never seen them since. Uh, and I've listened to pieces of their records here and there. I listened to Miss Machine when it came out a couple of times, and I can't get into it. But Calculating Infinity is just fucking amazing. This is definitely a case of um, being a fan of the album and not necessarily the band. So, Anyway, that's it for this round. Uh, this is the second time I've recorded this stack of CDs because I decided to use, instead of my phone, I decided to use a, um, a GoPro, a high-definition GoPro that I have. Uh, the problem with a GoPro is that they don't work very well in low light, meaning indoors. And uh, I tried toggling the settings and everything, and I played with it, editing it, and exported it, which is a couple of hours worth of work, and I was just not happy with the way it looked. So I've gone back to my phone, and uh, hopefully this, this works out all right for you guys. And uh, I'm super anal about the way this shit looks, and I hope you like the new intro. You may have seen a couple of them over the past few videos, and I think I'm going to stick with this one. So we'll see how it goes. But uh, keep commenting, keep liking, keep subscribing. Keep telling your friends about it and uh, keep talking to me about music in the comments and uh, we will keep this going as long as we can. I'll talk to you guys later.